Why, hello there, everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Mina san, konbawa. And today I'll be feeding my piece Lotharia ornatas. And I would also like to make another discussion about maybe starting a tarantula business locally, but one topic at a time. So, Let's discuss about our Peace Lotharia Ornatas and this feeding. So when it comes to Peace Lotharia Ornatas and Peace Lotharia in general, this genus, in my opinion, can be quite tricky to feed. It's usually hit or miss, sometimes they eat, and sometimes they don't. And that is one of the reasons why you don't really see me feed Peace Lotharias on video for this channel. And this video did take effort to actually record, because this genus and species is arboreal, and these enclosures open from the top, so getting a good view and getting a good recording was difficult. So by all means, if you want to support me as a tarantula breeder and this channel, leave this video a like, and also consider subscribing because I upload twice a week and let's get straight into it. So, as stated earlier, there's two topics I really want to talk about. One is Peace Lotharias, which is this feeding, and the other one is starting a tarantula business. So the first topic is Peace Lotharia ornatas. So, this feeding was very difficult, and honestly, I'm surprised that they actually ate on video for us. So I'm going to show everyone here that's watching this video some feedings, some attempted feedings, and some freshly molted Peace Lotharia ornatas. And all of these females are mines, and there are future breeders, and as a matter of fact, I'm actually looking for more mature male Peace Lotharia Ornatas, so that way I can diversify my bloodlines. And I do have one mature male that I can use, and if you're wondering how did I get this mature male, I've actually gotten this male way back when, when I picked up the Mystery Tarantula and the other OBT localities. And this Peace Lotharia mature male that I have was one of them. Well, at the time, was an inch sling or an inch and a half juvenile depending on how you want to judge that size as a juvenile or not and now he's grown up and he's a mature male so i am going to use him to breed with my females but i really would like to diversify my bloodlines so that way i can actually breed more within my collection instead of outsourcing other people's piece of their ornatas just so it can make it easier on my end but due to having only one mature male piece of their ornata what this essentially means is that it can only go down one generation, and then I have to outsource again. So I might as well just outsource a bunch of males now for a loan, just to get things going. So I am still looking for a mature male piece of their ornata. So if anyone has one and they want to do a loan with me, or try to attempt a loan, by all means reach out to me. I don't bite, nor do I kick hairs. So uh, my email is down below in the description. So please, by all means, send me an email if you do have one. Now let's discuss how many of my females are actually mature. Of all the 14 or 15 that I have, 8 of them are mature because they do drum at night and I have seen which ones have drummed and I do got them marked down and if you're wondering how big they are in terms of leg span, they're about 5.5 to 6 inches in leg span which is about 13 to 15 centimeters in lifespan. So these specimens here, in my personal opinion, are not very large in comparison to their mom. I still do have their mom, and their mom is about 8.5 inches in lifespan, or about 22 centimeters in lifespan. So she's very large in comparison to her daughters here, which is the surprising part. But hey, they're drumming at night and it drives me crazy. <laughs> like, actually crazy. Because I do have my mature male piece of their ornatas, their brothers, that are matured out, and they're drumming, which honestly irritates me sometimes, but I actually do find it pleasant at times, because it's like crickets when they chirp at night. It can be pleasant, but sometimes if it's too much, it keeps you up at night. <laughs> and I'm sure we all can relate. But overall, I think that's really about it when it comes to the topic of piece of their ornatas. So, let us move on to the next topic. And now, let us get on to the topic of Laxo here starting a tarantula business. I do want to start a tarantula business, but I really want to start small and start locally, so no online selling as of now, just a small local tarantula business. This is more so of me just testing the waters out, and also I want to give a disclaimer that if I do start a business, I do not want to go into it full time. I still want to do other, you know, things that I want to do, and I also would not like to give some context about some things leading up to this and whatnot. So, in the beginning, I was trying to save money for my tarantula business, to start it up, you know, buy supplies and whatnot. But what ended up happening was that I needed to get a surgery to actually remove something. 
But the worst part about it was that healthcare did not cover it, nor does health insurance help, so I had to pay out of pocket. And for those who live in America, I'm sure all of you understand how horrible the healthcare system is in the United States, so I ended up paying out of pocket, and this is why I sold away quite a bit of my females in my collection, which is why it's very reduced. So you may be wondering where did my female tarantulas go, and the reason is that I sold them away because I had to save up money for my surgery. So now that I got the surgery, and now I'm fine, I'm kicking, I'm still doing great. Don't worry, it's nothing dangerous. It was just a basic surgery that I needed, nothing crazy. So uh, don't get the wrong idea. But now that it's paid off, and now that I got it, now I can actually start saving and slowly build up to a small tarantula local business again. Now I'm not gonna actually sell a bunch of things, nor am I gonna sell certain things because I really just wanna test the waters out. So I do wanna start small with a small table at a show or something, and then just maybe do a small selection of what I like and what I think will sell. And while I am an experienced tarantula breeder, and I do know some of the people who exports and imports some of the other vendors, and some places I could get some good prices on tarantulas and whatnot, when it comes to selling, that is a whole nother beast. So I would like to see where this goes. And here in the United States, prices are pretty bad if I'm being honest. So let's discuss about prices here in the United States. So it's pretty obvious that it's highly inflated and everything is too expensive. So I am going to sell my prices pretty low. But then again, I don't want to make it too, too cheap and undercut everybody to where I'm not going to actually break even in terms of my investment and whatnot. So let us actually see how much I will price these tarantulas if I actually do start a small business. So the big questions everyone is probably going to ask and wonder is, when will I open my business or when will I start it and what will I sell? And honestly, it's still up in airs because as I stated, I just paid for my surgery. So I got to save up again. So it will take time. And honestly, I don't know exactly how long it'll take for me to save up because I'm essentially back to zero in terms of my savings. But I am a big believer in humble beginnings. So I don't want to go guns blazing in. I want to start off very, very small and then slowly grow it up to something bigger, if that's possible. Now, I don't want to make promises that I'll be the next big tarantula thing or whatnot. I'm just somebody who's passionate and just wants to start off small and see where it goes. But I think you can kind of see where I'm coming from, right? So I'm going to take it easy and take it slow and then just slowly work my way up. Because like my name Laxo, I like to take a very lax and a very low approach. And I think it's more enjoyable to see a small business grow up to be something bigger, like seeing a small little reptile booth at a show, and then years later they're a big company, or they're much bigger to where they can hire employees. And I honestly want my story to be something like that. So I don't want to start off big and then just see it dissipate into nothing because of debt, too much of a task, and not enough people, not enough funds or money, and that situation. So starting off small to me just makes more sense. This is just so I don't put myself into debt or into a bad situation in the beginning. Now I'm not gonna lie to myself. I actually feel a little nervous and a little bit scared, but at the same time, I'm pretty confident because I've been around this market and this hobby for so long and I've always been taking a seat in the back, but never up in the front. So this is the first time I'm gonna try to attempt to slowly jump to the front seat. But I do hope I get support from my community and from other tarantula breeders. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a huge uptaking task. But I do want to start off small. So that will pretty much unload a lot of the burden. And this is more so of testing the waters out. But let us pray we get something going right. Now when it comes to naming my business, I do want to keep Laxo in it. Because that way people can familiarize it with me. So that will stick around. But honestly, I want it very simple. And I do not want it to be the same as everyone else because every other tarantula business out there has three or four words in it. Tarantulas, arachnids, spiders, and exotic. Those four words are used so much in other tarantula businesses that it makes it very hard for it to stick out from everybody else. And what this does is that it makes it difficult to differentiate one business from another. So I would like to keep Laxo into my company business name if possible, but let us wait and see, right? And I do want it to be very simple too. So I am trying to get myself back into the breeding season because I know I usually start in March, but this time is a bit late because of my surgery. So all of the funds I originally planned to use for tarantula breeding this year went into that. So now I can officially start my tarantula breeding season and I will hold back a bit more of the stuff I produce 
just so I can have something in inventory or something I can use as future breeders instead of just wholesaling them all away to other tarantula vendors and breeders. And I hope they don't get mad at me for that because uh, I did supply them with inbound forays after all and pretty much everything else I've produced here on the channel. So if they're watching this, I'm sure they will understand. So if you made it this far, you may notice that I sound a bit off or a bit low. And that is because I'm not feeling too good today. I feel a little bit under. So I apologize about that. Sorry. But I think that's really about everything in terms of what I want to talk about. About my future endeavors of wanting to start a tarantula business. Starting small. And just seeing where it goes. And I would like to take a picture of when I start just so I can look back on it in the future and just be proud of myself. So I would actually like to know what everyone thinks about this future endeavor that I'm pursuing, and I don't really know how it will turn out. Now look, I really don't want people to set their expectations too high, but I don't want them to set it low either. Let's just not set any expectations, because we don't know exactly what to expect. I just want people to know that there's going to be a lot of bumps in this road, so uh, let's join in on this bumpy ride, right? Now, I would be lying to you viewers if I said I had everything figured out. I honestly don't. But, I do have the passion, I do have a dream, and I do have the direction of where I want to go and what I want to do. And I'm going to use that as my blueprint of finding my direction and getting started on where I am now and where I want to go. And, uh, yeah, with that, I guess I'll call this a video. So, as always, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to stick around. I upload every single Tuesday and Friday here on this channel and also support me on my social medias such as my IG and Patreon. And shout out to my Patreon members such as Kale for supporting my Patreon and helping keeping my spiders fed. And with that, stay lax and laxo out from the Kumo Sensei.